Here we're going to look at a couple of cable testers that are more than just simple continuity testers. They'll also give you a wire map and one of them will give you the distance of the wires and so forth. Now the first one here is the ideal voice data video tester which also is capable of putting out a tone signal that you could receive with a locator. You'll notice the remote unit comes out of the bottom if you want to take it out because you want to test some cable in one location and, uh, and go to another location. All right, And there's also the coaxial cable piece for testing coax because being the voice data video tester this thing will test uh, both uh, network media and coaxial cable. All right, when we look at the end here, we see an RJ45 connector and an RJ11 connector, and then the coaxial cable connection up here. Now, in our case, we're going to be using the, the RJ45 connector to test our data media. So I'm going to make the connections for that. And this is a very simple instrument to use. All I have to do, touch the data button here and it goes through the test. It gives me a couple of indications here. For one thing, it says there's no shielding. Yes, that's true. This is UTP, which is unshielded twisted pair. It finds ID number one, which is what my ID unit is, and then it gives me two rows of numbers. The numbers go right in order from one to eight. Both rows of numbers are exactly one through eight. What that's indicating is what's connected on pin number one on this end is connected to pin number one on the other end. And two goes to two, and three goes to three, and four goes, and so forth. So this is a straight through cable, and it's also a good cable because I don't see any numbers missing here or any numbers that are next to another number. Right? But if one went to two and two went to one, then that would be a problem. So this is exactly what we want to see here. So as soon as we do our test, we're good to go. I can tap on the video button, which will turn the unit off. If we don't turn it off, I think it times out and shuts off after five minutes or so. But if you're, not, if you're done your test, why not hit the button and turn it off? All right, disconnect things, plug it back in, and I'm good to go. All right, another tester I'd like to show you is the Fluke LAN meter. Uh, this is the Fluke 620 LAN cable meter. This thing will do a very similar test to what you saw with the ideal voice data video tester a second ago, but this will give you more information. All right, same thing on the end here. You can see there's a B and C type connector for coax. That's for the older uh, 10 base 2, 10 base 5 network testing. There is a port for uh, UTP, right, which is what we're going to use. And over here, a serial connection for testing certain kinds of STP cable. All right, so I'm going to make the connection to the meter. I think I'll use this cable and make the connection there. Now, this unit comes with a mail style remote unit. So I'm not going to be able to do this to use it, so I have to... Uh, put to use a coupler. So if I plug in my remote unit on one side of the coupler and plug my cable into the other end, now I've made my connection to the remote unit. Now, very simple instrument to use. I put it into the test version. It tells me what it's testing here and it quickly said UTP uh, 568AB and it gives me an indication of uh, the results of the test, which here it says pass. It gives me seven foot. That's how long it calculates the, the patch cord to be. And it found ID number one, which I, it is the number one unit. Now, if I go to the length setting, it'll do a continuity test, but now you're seeing one, two, three, six, and a downward flashing arrowhead or triangle. So if I hit the down triangle, now it tells me four, five, seven, eight. Now if, you've, if you're guessing that those are probably the wire pairs, then you are correct. Each 
wire pair are coming out to be 7 feet. If I arrow back up, you can see uh, the orange pair and the green pair are both 7 feet. The blue pair and the brown pair are both 7 feet. Now that may seem silly that, well, of course they're 7 feet because they're both in, they're all, all four in the same jacket, so why wouldn't they be? Well, if there was an anomaly with the cable that, in, that gave up some resistance, uh, you would detect that by uh, the wire pair, uh, you know, maybe one pair out of the th out of the four pair could be reported as a different length, and that could be a problem. The last thing we're going to look at on this device is the wire map. Now this gives us kind of the same indication that you saw a moment ago on the voice data video tester, where you had the two rows of numbers. One difference, though, is that the Fluke land meter puts things into their, uh, you know, their wire pair. So you're seeing the orange pair, the green pair, the blue pair, and the brown pair, and their with their position number, if you will. The orange pair on one and two, the green pair on three and six, the blue pair four, five, and so forth. All right, so that's a pretty handy thing too. Uh, one advantage that the Fluke has over the uh, the Link Master and the Pathfinder is when you test a crossover cable, you'll see the results here. You'll see 1, 2 on one line, 3, 6 on the other line, and then 3, 6 here, and 1, 2 down here. And then you'll see 4, 5, and 7, 8 exactly as they are here. And you'll quickly see that, you're, that you have a crossover cable, which incidentally will fail test. But that's okay. When we look at the results and we see what we have, we'll know that we have a crossover cable. So this device makes it very easy to see that. I believe that the ideal voice data video connector would give you the same indication because it gives you the numbers. All right, so that's all there is to see here. I hope that this was worthwhile.